the Beacon Hill study was designed really with one overarching goal, which is to try to test the, the closed loop system, the bionic pancreas, in a much more challenging environment, the outpatient environment, when people could eat whatever they want, they could exercise how and wherever they wanted to, and they would be distracted from paying attention to the, the closed loop system because they would be doing other things like working or playing tourist. But at the same time, we needed to make sure that we had very close supervision of the patients uh, in the trial, and make sure they were safe. The uh, scope of the study is such that they stay in the hotel at night, but during the day they're able to go the entire Boston Peninsula, really from Massachusetts Avenue down to uh, the waterline. So it's about three square miles, which includes restaurants and shopping and museums. My name's Fati Arula, and I've had diabetes since I was nine. I was diagnosed um, just a couple of days after my ninth birthday. My biggest challenge has been balancing diabetes and good blood sugar management with exercise. That's one of the, the best parts about being involved in clinical research. I found over the years is just the people that you get to meet. You meet really, really smart, passionate people who are doing these studies. Ed Damiano and Steven Russell are no exception. And same with, you know, the nurse practitioners working with them. I happily signed up for this earlier phase of this study um, with Ed and Steven. And what that required was coming here to Mass General for two weekends. Um, so in late 2010 and early 2011, I came and I stayed for 48 hours and basically had an earlier version of this system. So now it's on an iPhone and now it's with these tandem pumps, but um, back then they were using the Omnipod, the Inflet Omnipod to deliver the insulin and glucagon. And the, the whole algorithm, the whole computer was not yet on an iPhone, it was on an actual computer. So I had to be hooked up to something like that for the whole weekend. Of course it's a new, you know, it's a new system. It's a system that's totally mobile. It's not running on a laptop, it's running on, a, on, a, on an iPhone. And so that's been just tremendous, uh, you know, tremendously liberating to have the subject just sort of put this thing on and walk out and, and spend the day in the city. That's been fun. Having to stay in the hospital room versus now being able to go out, walk around, go exercise, um, go out to eat at restaurants, like that's a big difference for me, but I think it also, the reason that that's possible is because of the difference in like the fact that they don't just have the technology on the computer anymore, um, they have it on this, and this is able to communicate with the pumps in just such a better way and a more smooth way than before. So really, it means you don't have to be confined because there isn't always troubleshooting going on. We've had to do very little troubleshooting with this system, um, which is really amazing. So I think that is what gives us the flexibility to be able to walk around and, and act a little more normal. Um, and it's just a testament to like how much they fine tuned the actual algorithms and the computer mechanisms and things. So we have made some modifications to the glucagon controller and with those we've seen better control and a better ability to manage hypoglycemia in the face of what is quite a bit of activity. I mean I actually would say that the subjects in our study are probably more active than they would be uh, on their own in any given five day window. So they're you know they're on their on, on, on foot walking around this, this three square mile area. So that's all, but it turns out to be a, a lot of activity. And it's the kind of activity I found in my in my son causes tremendous challenge to hypoglycemia. Just walking around, brisk walking around the city can really clear a lot of glucose uh, without the need for insulin. So we're seeing that this system has done a very good job of managing that. The strategy for clinical trials of this device has been to gradually provide more degrees of freedom, more challenges to the controller. So we're looking roughly between 135 and 140 is where you seem to be. Uh, over the past three days with ab lows between 70 and 80. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fairly typical actually of what we've been seeing for the, you know, the, the group as a whole. Uh, that kind of a mean glucose. So I think we're, we're pretty pleased with that level. It's a little bit lower than we, you know, we might have expected, but um, we did think it was going to come down a bit. Um, and, you know, we had very good results overall in terms of hypoglycemia. I think that might be pretty predictive of what you'd expect you could get on this device. Cool. I try not to get too excited or too imaginative about the future because at the end of this weekend I'm going back to my own insulin pump and my own self-management um, and that's going to be how it is for a while. This has been really wonderful the past couple of days. Um, 
and I can totally see it, you know, being a little bit more fine-tuned, going through the FDA process and everything, and eventually coming out and being something that, yeah, I would just incorporate into my daily life seamlessly, and it would make my diabetes management a lot easier.